Sea of Red, it's time for another Fireside Chat, the official podcast of Flames fans. It's go time. Well, it's December, and I'm Dan, representing Fireside Chat, alongside uh, Jeff Gregory, our Fireside Chat correspondent, Stockton's finest, as he's known. Jeff, how you doing? I'm doing great. Merry Christmas. How are you doing, Dan? Merry Christmas to you. And it sounds like Heat fans actually got good news for the holidays. The Heat are going to be sticking around for another year. Can you tell us about that announcement? Sure. So we uh, sat down. uh, Brian Petrovic had a season ticket holder uh, meeting, uh, chalk talk with the coach, and filled us in on the details. Uh, So the agreement that is partially in place right now uh, that the Flames have signed and sent to the city is a one-year deal. To, uh, to extend the lease. And according to Brian, they're going to be meeting another 15 or 20 times between now and April to try to bang out an extended deal on top of that. Uh, part of that deal is uh, Stockton is going to be investing about $2.2 million in the practice facility uh, that, the, that the Heat practice at and uh, upgrading the lighting, uh, the PA, the scoreboard and some of the the facilities around Stockton Arena as well, and it sounds like, uh, it, according to Brian, the Flames uh, like Stockton. They 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 like the arena. They like the area. The AHL in general likes that whole area as well. They they put a lot of money into bringing people out to California or teams out to California. So you know it's it's nice to have this area. Uh, arenas are in place. Uh, now it's just a matter of making sure that the the deals uh, that do get put into place, the the upgrades that that come in, are are done accordingly and split amongst the teams that share the arena and the city uh, for their events. And the the Stockton the Stockton Kings, which is the D League for the Sacramento Kings, play there. Uh, I know they have some uh, minor league. Uh, indoor soccer that have have played there in the past, and there's still other events that the city hosts, uh, concerts and uh, boxing and and ice capades and stuff like that that still go on in the arena. So uh, it has to be a favorable deal for everybody, and and I understand the reasoning behind it. And I would imagine if they can hammer out the one year, and if these improvements are made, we could probably see a long term deal shortly after that. What do you think? of what Petrovic said is that the first one year deal going to next year is all but agreed upon it. The flames have signed it. Uh, it was all the notion or all the notations that the city wanted that that deal is done just waiting for the ink to dry from the city so that the heat will be here next year for sure. And the additional meetings that will be held between now and the end of the season and into the summertime, uh, are the ones that are going to go for the three to five years beyond. They're, they're trying to get the longest term possible. Um, he had mentioned that they're looking you know, three or five, uh, and they want to make a long-term commitment to Stockton, and Stockton wants to keep the heat here. Well, that's nice to hear because this team has had so many AHL affiliates. I mean, we've seen to be moving the affiliate every two, three years. So I'm glad to hear that there's finally some stability. And if there there is some some talk about the fact of of attendance and how attendance is down, and from a couple of people that I've talked with, uh, the break even point for for the Heat is right around three thousand to thirty one hundred in the arena. So if they can average anything around thirty four to thirty five hundred uh, for the thirty four games that they're in, uh, they are exactly where they need to be. Right now, it's about 31 or 32. It's interesting. Sometimes I wonder if the AHL actually uh, counts for for some like like free tickets or giveaway tickets uh, in their attendance. I, I would think it's the people that walk through uh, the doors that they count as attendance, not the revenue it's driven by. Uh, they are low in the league. Uh, they are fourth or fifth from the bottom in the league. What are the averages like this year? Do you know, Jeff? They're right around 3,100. There are some bigger games coming up, Teddy Bear Toss and Star Wars Night and, and other other special uh, specialty nights that come up. But it, an average night is is going to be around 3,000. Uh, weekdays, obviously, are going to be less. I think on Wednesday, it was like 1,600 in there. But there are, there are weekends where it's been 45 and 
the 4,800, which is, well, it's a good turnout. That's a good turnout. Let's move away from Stockton Arena News and let's talk a little bit about where the Heat are in the standings right now. I think this is the best I can remember the Heat starting in 26 games. They have 17 wins, five losses, two overtime losses so far. You, you followed this team closer than I have, Jeff. Best start for this team since they moved to Stockton? Uh, absolutely. It's um, it's a good mix of rookies and, and experienced players. Uh, you know, two, three, four years in, you've got uh, the captain, Brian Fraze, who is a little older. Um, really has brought a good leadership to this bunch. Uh, they they all play in unison as a team. It's the best I've seen this team play uh, as a unit. You don't have really somebody standing out, you know, trying to trying to be do it all all themselves. It it's, it very much is a team effort, and it has been it's been very refreshing to see this team play this way. So this team now has 38 points as of the time we record this on the 20th of December, which puts them second in the Pacific Division behind only the Tucson Roadrunners. Uh, the next team, it looks like, is Ontario, who has 30 points. So they, they've they got a good, I guess, a good uh, stranglehold on that second position. They are. They're, they're a solid eight points with two games in hand over Ontario, um, who is in third. Uh, they trail Tucson, who is on fire. Um, I mean, they're, they're clipping off an, you know, an 808 clip right now in a winning percentage. I think they are tops in the, in the American league and winning percentage, uh, Tucson is, um, so they are, they're, they're, it's a good, it's a good bunch. It's a fun bunch. There's no quit in this bunch. And it really is a, um, it really is a team effort. He rolls, uh, Kale McLean, coach Kale McLean rolls all four lines, uh, kind of shortens his bench a little bit. Um, on that fourth line. Uh, recently, he's been going a lot with 11 forwards and seven D-men. Interesting. Yeah, it, it, it actually, it really is. I'm, I'm kind of surprised, but there's been some injuries uh, that have that have caused that to happen. So why don't we start there? Who's, who's injured right now? Well, right now, uh, Ryan Lomberg is out. He's week to week. Uh, an abdominal strain is what uh, he, he said during one of the autograph sections, the sessions. We get more from the HL and the NHL. NHL, that'd be just upper body. They list it as upper body, but when you have the players signing autographs and you can ask them <laughs> directly, uh, you kind of get that information. According to him, when we heard him talk, he's coming back. Right now he's shooting for the New Year's Eve game um, and then possibly the January 3rd game. Uh, so within this next week or two, he should be back. Brian Fraze just came back from a broken ankle. Uh, he's been skating for the last two games after missing five, uh, five or six. Um, uh, uh, Rene Valiev took a puck to the face in practice and uh, kind of knocked out a couple of teeth and had stitches. So he's been out for the last four games. Uh, he was he was hoping to be back on Wednesday, but it looks like he's slated for a Saturday start in San Diego. E2 missed uh, about three weeks in, or about three games, four games, and he came back. That's E2 to Alola. E2 to Alola, who's surprisingly really good. I, I I like his game, but he's still a rookie and he's still learning. It's why you're in the American League. Exactly. That's what it's supposed to be. Um, they Parsons finally cleared, and he is down in, in Kansas City. So Tyler Parsons uh, is sharing the net with Nick Schneider down in Kansas City to keep him ice time. Because with uh, John Gillies and uh, Zagadulin, I, I I'm not going to pronounce his first name. <laughs> um, there's really no room in the net for him if he were to uh, if he were to come here. Yeah, and the, and this thing too, the Flames want to get all these guys, um, you know, enough starts to keep them going. And this is a development league; you need to develop guys. And with Zagadulin looking good, there's no reason to you know sit him or not get him starts. We know what the Flames think of John Gillies; they still want to get something out of that player. I mean, there's fans up here that thought that he should have been the backup this year. So I think that's the right move to make. And it's hard when you've got so many good goaltenders because you can only have so many per team, but I wouldn't be surprised if an AHL team had a long-term injury, if we might see uh, Parsons loaned out there. I wonder if they would actually loan Parsons out or loans or loan Gillies out. That's interesting. I, I could see them bringing Tyler Parsons up because I think he has more of a future within the flame. And then loan Gillies somebody else just to get him play time. Exactly. Hmm. And I, I think that that could be something that 
if that situation does happen, I, I could I could very much see that. That's interesting you say that. I mean, Matt and I have talked about this a few times, and I think that since John Gillies is probably on his last leg as a flame. And yeah, I think, you know, they really want to make sure that uh, Zaga Doolin gets as much time in the net as he can. Well, right now they are splitting the net. And, and with the exception of the first weekend when Gillies was hurt, um, they're alternating the net between Zaga Doolin and Gillies. And Flames fans, remember, there's a lot more in the HL than in the NHL. There's a lot more back-to-back games. Often this team will play like Friday, Saturday, or Saturday, Sunday. Correct. We I know we played a weekend uh, bout with Can- with San uh, with San Jose last weekend, Saturday in in the uh, SAP Center, and then Sunday back in uh, Stockton Arena, and then we played Wednesday, and then we go down to uh, we go down to San Diego on Saturday, and. Uh, so yeah, there's we have a three game road trip Saturday, Wednesday, Friday, and then we play Saturday again here. So it, the weekends are usually a back to back. You may get a Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday game. It's rare that you'll ever see a Monday, uh, the occasional Tuesday. I don't think I've been to a game on Thursday yet. Um, so th- you, you're correct. There's there's a lot of back-to-backs. You were saying earlier how, you know, this team, one of the reasons they're successful is all the veterans the Flames brought in. Guys like, you know, Kirkland, Davidson, uh, Quine is down there. We saw another veteran join those ranks this week as the Calgary Flames sent Austin Zarnick to the AHL. His job really got taken by Dylan Dubé, a call-up earlier this year. And, you know, in order to put someone on the roster, you got to take somebody else out. You guys saw Zarnick for three games uh, just recently on his conditioning stint. Where do you think Zarnik's going to fit in on that lineup? I I think they will. he will try to put somebody like a Luke Philp with him. Uh, he being Coach Kale McLean? Yeah, K- Kale McLean will, will put some some rookie with him to help him out. Uh, they want to sp- – he, he's fast. He, he does have speed down here. Um, he scored the game winner in overtime against San, uh, against San Jose – does Austin Zarnick, I mean, this is a guy who's had some time in the NHL now, but does he look like he's too good for the HL? No. <laughs> I, I, it just blatant no. Because ever since we acquired him, I thought, ah, okay, he'll work as the 13th forward, but this is an AHL forward. And he did not really impress me with the three games that I saw him play. It's also been a while since he played. My wife, Mrs. Finest, as we call her, uh, was like, for for him being in the NHL, it's not like he he wows him. I mean, I, I could say the same thing about Dylan Dubé. I, I like Dubé, but I don't think Dylan Dubé right now still is a fully bona fide NHL player. I, I think Zarnik is the same of the same. Uh, he's cut from the same cloth. He's good. He's a bottom six player up in the NHL, probably more of a fourth line player. He's an energy guy. Uh, but I I just think that... Um, if if you're an NHL player that comes down to the AHL, he's got three points in three games. Two of those are assists. Uh, he got the overtime game winner on three on three. Um, and so, I, I don't know. I, I was expecting a little more. And maybe my expectations are are a little higher when I see somebody coming down. He didn't he didn't dominate the game. And, and if I'm seeing somebody who is going to be called back up or is an NHL player, I expect that player to kind of dominate the game. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. Especially a guy who I think has had as much NHL time as him, um, you know, coming up and down. Another guy the Flames fans have fallen in love with recently and wanted to get your thoughts from the Stockton perspective is Zach Ronaldo. Ronaldo got recalled. Not the guy we all thought to get recalled, but the guy who did get recalled and uh, had a few good goals for this team at one point. Ronaldo had pretty much as many, if not more points than Lucic did. What what are you seeing from Ronaldo down there? Remember, we haven't played as many home games as a lot of uh, other teams. So we we got a chance to see him and he's been in Calgary for the last eight or nine uh, Flames games. So I got a chance to see him in the uh, out of the 17 games he played here. I, I think about six of them were at home. Gritty player, really a good gritty player. Uh, Bring some speed. He's not going to back down. He definitely does protect uh, Phillips and and Philp and and some of the the smaller players that are here. Um, good guy. I, I, he's 
he's Lomberg with with more NHL experience. He's been one of the more entertaining guys to talk to from a media perspective. His uh, his scrums, if you haven't seen them, you should watch them on the Flame site. They're pretty entertaining. Yeah, I, I I like him. I like that fact that he's got a he's got a little bit of Hathaway and a Garnet Hathaway in him as well as he's got that agitator uh, style to him. Uh, except he'll drop the gloves and and drop you like that too. So, you know, we really want to know from a Stockton perspective, um, and I'll ask about a couple more guys, but then we'll kind of open it up to you to let Flame fans know what they should know because you are the, you know, the beat for this team, the guy who knows the team better than we do. But a couple of the players we always get asked about, uh, Matthew Phillips, who's currently the top point getter for the team. He has 28 points in 25 games, and Glenn Godden, 25 points in 26 games. You've said you've heard it. We've heard it. Why aren't these guys in the NHL? Um, overall, why don't you just walk us through what you're seeing with both Phillips and Godden? Uh, for being 155 pounds, Phillips actually throws his weight around a little bit. He's it, He looks like a big guy when he plays. He, he He's not afraid of the blue paint. He'll finish his checks in the corner. He likes to dig pucks out. He has a nose for the puck. Um and, and this year, as opposed to last year, he's bearing his shots a little better. It's more like he's picking his spots as opposed to just flinging the puck at the, you know, at the, at the net. Um, I think he's got a little, he's got a little better vision. He still needs time. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Flames fan. Please let me have him for the rest of the year. And then you could take him next year. <laughs> Well, just, you know, on that too, I mean, Flames fans here always say, let's call this guy up or that guy up. And I think some of that's just Flames fans want to see the player because it's hard to get stocked in games here. But you have to remember that for every guy we call up, somebody needs to sit out. And and who are you going to put out? Because he is playing second line minutes right now. Uh, if he goes up, does he does he play fourth line? You're almost better to keep him in the AHL playing top minutes than bring him to the NHL to play fourth line minutes. He's probably recording somewhere around 20 to 22 minutes a game because he does play both power play one. He plays penalty kill one. He is second line, uh, especially with uh, Kale McLean doing uh, 11 forwards over the last three or four games. He's getting more time and he's playing. Typically he plays with, with Godden. Uh, as his center, but he's also been playing with Brian Fraze as a center as well. So he's got some good talent uh, that surrounds him. He he still, you know, I, I've seen him miss a breakaway or two, but who doesn't? But he still needs a little bit more time. He he still can get pushed off the puck from a bigger player. Uh, so he still needs to work a little bit on on that. Um, this team tends to, and and they're getting out of it. They tend to play a lot of East West, which drives me crazy. And um, I, I would rather them just to chip the puck out uh, and and set up as opposed to trying to cross rink something with three defenders that are there. Um, but overall, he he needs the remainder of this year. Um, hopefully, a knock on wood, uh, this team stays stays hungry and gets into that playoff because I think the playoff time uh, will help will help these kids a lot. Is Phillips a guy who you're looking at as probably being more of a sniper? Is he more of a playmaker? I mean, you know, can we expect him to be the puck mover or is he pretty much waiting in front of the net, get the puck and put it in? What's this guy's game? He dangles in front. Uh, he, he can't skate. He can skate it in, but he's not much of that play. I mean, he does have 16 assists. I mean, let's let's point it out. He, he. I think everybody thinks of him like Johnny because of his size, but they play different games. He's more of a Dylan Dubé type. I I think he's I think he's actually a hair ahead of Dubé where when Dubé was here. I, I don't the last eight or nine games that that he's been up in the NHL. Don't don't judge that comment by that. Judge it by the time he spent here. Uh, I I think here he he played better. I think a little smarter. Um, he, he doesn't bomb from the blue line. He digs deep. He carries the puck deep and he'll, he'll play around the blue. He'll play around the the paint a lot. And how about Glenn Godden? Glenn Godden to me is going to be in the NHL next year. So leave him alone, guys. I want him here for a year as well. I think Godden could be on the team now if they had room for him. Yeah, they don't have room for him. I think Glenn Godden right now is better than, say, Mark Jankowski. Uh, but Mark Jankowski has been eating popcorn for 
uh, the last couple of weeks. And I don't think you bring Godden up to play him eight or 10 minutes, because if he does go up there, he will be fourth line center um, and he will be short on that bench. Yeah, I mean, if you want to call up a fourth line center just for the sake of doing it, you more likely to bring up a guy like Fraze or Quine or somebody like that. Yes, I I would think those two. I, I would actually say Quine over Fraze, not because of performance wise down here, but I think Fraze settles this group so much. Well, he's also your captain. You don't want to pull your captain up. And I think they gave him the captaincy for that reason. He he's got NHL experience, but. Quite frankly, if you put a C on an NH on an AHL guy, he's pretty much deemed to be in the AHL the entire season. That's that's my thought process on that. Flames fans know that Zega Doolin's doing well. He's got 16 games, uh, zero regulation losses, and uh, looks like he's only lost in OT. No, he's lost one game, but third or fourth game of the year, he he got pulled with four. He allowed four in like 15 minutes and got pulled. Oh, right. Yeah, I remember that one. And then uh, John Gillies, as we talked about earlier, G- Gillies is an older goaltender. Gillies is a guy who's probably on that cusp of he needs to either, you know, make his NHL presence known or he'll be probably a career HLer. Um, you and I talked last time about some of the uncertainty and net behind Zagadulin. What are we seeing from Gillies this year? Well, Gillies has got better numbers than Zagadulin. I mean, his save percentage is 906 versus an 894 for Zagadulin. His goals against is 276 versus 329 um, for, for Zagadulin. Um, he doesn't get, again, the, the comment that my wife always says is if Gillies allows a goal, if he does not allow a goal within the next two minutes after that goal, he'll have a good night. Um, and it happened the other night. He had 47 saves against San Jose in a, in a 5-2 win, and they were just peppering him. Um, he had 21 saves in the first period alone to keep the to keep the game scoreless. So he's he's playing well. He's playing more out of out of his net. He's not he's not so far deeper in his net. He's playing at the top of the crease. He's standing up more. Um, he is he's tracking the puck better, and he's he's got better rebound control this year than last year. That is that's obvious to the naked eye. So it sounds like there's still some work there on sort of the mental aspect. Like you were saying, if he gets scored on once, he needs to, you know, not let himself get scored on again. But as far as his actual on ice play, we're seeing some progress there. Like you said, he used to go way too far back in the net. And I think he'd often get beat because of that. But you're saying we're seeing some some changes there. Yeah, he used to play on his knees a lot too. He was the smallest he six did. foot six goalie ever. And I, 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 gave him the nickname of glove high glove side high because he always got beat glove side high and he's standing up more. He's, he's challenging shooters more Um, to, to make my point the other night, he gave up three goals in a minute 29 and the heat battled back to three, two, uh, but they lost the game three, two, but it's that one that, that 96 seconds that he just lost focus and got in his own head and besides that, he made some fantastic saves before and after that. But for whatever reason, those 96 seconds, he he left himself and wasn't what he was for the remainder of the year. Uh, so it, he's got some tough losses. He's gotten he's got some good runs support right now. The the Heat are a team that have have, have not they scored two goals or more in every game. They, they haven't scored below two goals. So as far as some of the rookies here, um, you know, who's we've got guys like uh, Adam Rajishka, you mentioned uh, Itu Tulola. Um, really, those are probably the two rookies besides Zagadulin that, oh, and Pospisil too, I guess. Um, what are we seeing from the game from those three guys? Well, Pospisil's been hurt. He got rocked in Bakersfield and has not. He's only played six games this year. Yeah, and and he went from week to week to day to day back to week to week um the last this last time uh that we that he was signing autographs was a couple weeks ago and a friend of mine said that he's back to week to week uh due to uh, well he didn't say what it was due to he thought he thinks it is due to migraines and he's still not out of that he, he got hit hard i mean hard yeah he he was he is almost to the point where he was winning that fight and he got 
dropped. Yeah, it was it was something, and and he's fully not back. So I haven't I don't expect to see him on the ice until at least January. And plus, just kind of like with calling people up to February uh, to to Calgary, where are you going to put him? He he, you know, this team is playing so well. Well, I think most of these young guys that we talked about, Pospisil, you know, Rajishka, Tool, they're not guys that get called up. These are guys that need some well, HL Well, you seasoning. talked about the rookies and the guy that jumps out right now who was the hidden guy and now leads the team in goals is Luke Philp. Um, yeah, for 10 games, he was scoreless and invisible, and all of a sudden, goals are coming in. He's, he, let's say he leads the team with 13 goals, and he's a shooter he he's picking his spots. Um, the first couple of goals that he had, I, I think he was just flinging them at the, at the net. And, and now he's got to the point where he's picking his spots and hitting them. Um, got a nose for the puck. Pretty good skater. Doesn't mind going through the crease, going through the middle, uh, going through the slot and, and firing, firing shots. But he's got a, he, he's a natural goal scorer. He's, he's got a good eye for the net. We talked with him at the rookie camp this summer, and he knew that there'd be some adjustment to get into the HL game from the Canadian college game, which most guys don't adjust to. And it sounds like you saw that, that there was a bit of an adjustment period. But yeah, I think this guy might be, I don't know if he's got much of an NHL future, but I think this guy could be a, a an unsung hero of uh, the Heat for a couple so of years. He's so young too. He looks, he looks like a little baby. I mean, he's got that baby face to him, but he is, um, he's a player. He's he's got a he's got a good nose for the for the puck. He's uh, 24, so I guess you know in terms of hockey player age, that's about the age that you know you're starting to really develop at the AHL he, level. He looks like he's 18. <laughs> he really does. He does. Uh, the other guys that you're talking about, uh, Tulola, uh, after coming back from injury, has he's he's slow to pick it up. Um, He's doing well. He's not as noticeable as he was at the beginning of the season. Uh, they change line mate. Coach McLean has changed line mates uh, for him. He's actually now in an all rookie line with Ruzitska. And Philp has been on that line occasionally um, in and out. So uh, Ruzitska and, and Tulola uh, have both, it's their rookie season. You can tell that they're a rookie, but they're still adjusting a little bit. What else do we need to know, Jeff, about this team? I mean, you're you're our Stockton expert. Is there any other guys that we should be, uh, you know, keeping our eye on as Flames fans? Anything else we need to know about these guys this year? I I like Justin Kirkland. He he is over the last three or four games. He scored goals in the final minute, uh, either to tie or win a game. He uh, in Colorado on the last day. With the goalie pulled, he scored a goal with what 51 seconds descended into overtime, uh, where Philp scored the winner in overtime. Kirkland's also what third in the team for scoring or points, I guess 23 points overall. Yeah, he scored a goal against San Jose to win it with 17 seconds and still was a great game. And then last on Wednesday, he scored, uh, he scored the game tying goal with 3.7 seconds left against Iowa. They they eventually fell in overtime, but to squeak a point out of that game uh, was was good. So he's just quiet. He's steady, um, plays all positions, and uh, really is. Uh, he he's got a really nice game. He, again, it's one of these guys where he makes his presence known, and and he's a good player. So. Um, He's a guy that really is. Uh, I, I like his game, and I could see, I, I could see him going up for a week or two and coming back down. I think they've got so many guys to, uh, you know, to potentially look at if they want to pull somebody up. But Kirkland's been around the AHL for a while, and we know the Calgary Flames tend to like to look at guys that've been around for a little longer. So I could definitely see Kirkland at some point coming up as an injury replacement. I, I would like to see him go up over a Phillips or Godden. I because agree. I I think those two just need the full year down here where, as you said, Kirkland's got a little more experience. Well, and there's also a lot, and I think fans don't understand it, but, you know, going from Stockton to Calgary and the transfer and the travel and, you know, it takes a lot out of a player. And I think for some of these more senior players, they can handle a little bit better than not only just the on ice play, but a guy like Godin or Phillips that can really disrupt your, your rhythm as a hockey player, especially young player. Agreed. I mean, they brought Phillips up for three days 
or for three games when when uh, Kachuk was hurt. hurt. Uh, he didn't get in the game, but he it was a really nice interview that they had with him that he was pretty happy with skating on NHL ice and and skating with the team. So it was a uh, it was a good experience for him. Uh, but that was out of necessity. That wasn't just to bring him up for a look. And um, so that was that was good that he got that experience. Um, we've talked a lot about forwards and uh, goaltenders here. Who's Who should we keep our eye on on the back end? Well, you've already had Davidson up there once, Brandon Davidson up there once. And I think uh, for everybody on the back end. Davidson, I would say, is probably the most experienced defenseman on this team. Would you agree? I would agree, and it's nice that he puts uh, that Kale McLean puts um, a- Andrew Nielsen with him because I think he really learns that that game from him. He he learns that calmness from him. Uh, the other guys that are on defense, uh, most of them though are on AHL contracts. The only other really interesting guy I think for Flames fans besides Nielsen who you mentioned is uh, Renad Valiev. And Valiev, to me, he still's making a few mistakes here and there. I think over the last time that we spoke. Um, I'm I'm still pretty high on him, but I don't think he has. Uh, I don't think he stepped forward. I think Yellison, um, with Yellison going up, uh, it, I don't want to say it hurt uh, Valiev, uh, but he he had to learn to play with other players, and I think he kind of took a step back. Um, I think Yellison Yellison since he's returned from Calgary has definitely brought the physical game more. Uh, the first f- five or six games that I saw when he was here, he he wasn't really going deep and he wasn't really finishing his checks that much. I, I I don't know if he was still getting used to North American ice, but ever since he's come back from Calgary, he is a different player. He is more physical. I don't even know if it's North American ice, but probably just the North American style. They're not as physical in Europe in general when they play hockey. He he has, I think right now, he's the number two defenseman on this team behind Davidson. I think he's leapfrog uh, Valiev. Yeah, and and I think if the Flames were to make a call up there, Davidson's probably your guy again. Uh, partly because we talked about that age and experience, he's probably the most ready to step in, especially on a short term recall. Correct. I, I I would agree with that. I I don't think anybody else but Davidson goes up. Besides those guys, there's really nobody here that's of interest to Flames fans. I mean, Shillington's been up and down, but he's up right now. Um, Yellison, like you said, probably not going to come up again this year, I wouldn't imagine, but a guy that we should keep our eyes on for the future. I would I would say so. I, I think he could, depending upon who gets moved in the offseason uh, from Calgary or who doesn't get signed, I could see Yellison up in a Flames uniform next year for sure. I think they're really trying to make a spot for Yusuf Valamaki in the offseason as well. Yeah, I, I I think that everything else, everybody else on this team pretty much is on an AHL contract. Rob Hamilton, Zach Leslie, uh, Corey Schooneman, uh, all of those guys are on and they're getting regular minutes. Um but they're they're all on AHL contracts, which means the Flames would have to sign up to an NHL contract to bring them up. And just shows the lack of depth in this organization on defense. Uh, you know, I mean all our best young defensemen are in the NHL right now. I and I wish and last two, the last two drafts for the Flames, I don't think they've picked a D-man at all, even in late rounds. Um, everything's been a forward or a goalie, and it and it just drives me crazy because there were a lot of defensemen that were on the board when when we were picking. And uh, this team needs defense. Uh, Zach Leslie, out of the AHL guys, I think Zach Leslie is the guy who, uh, to me, is the guy that's going to be most deserving if he gets a, a contract. But even then. I don't think they're going to sign him to any type of a, a league minimum for there. Well, and you know, it's interesting you mentioned that about drafting defensemen. I think, and Matt and I have talked about this, we just need to draft players. Like the last few years, we've seen Tree package up his picks for whether it's Hamilton or Hamanek, like he's, you know, trading picks off to get these high profile players. And because of that, we don't have a lot of guys in the system. Um, you know, we definitely need some defensemen, but I think most time when you've got fifth, sixth, even seventh round players, they're your filler guys in the AHL or ECHL, but those guys are having to play a bigger role because all we've got. So I think the best thing the Flames can do for themselves this year is acquire some picks if they can. And I think there's some moves we can make at the deadline, but just make your picks. Well, they don't, the, the defensive 
tandems that are down here, uh, with the exception of maybe Nielsen, they're not big. I mean, Nielsen goes, what, 230? And and besides that, you don't have anybody, you don't have any any players that are like that on this team. I mean, Zach Leslie's maybe 180, 190 at the at best. Yellison's 190. Zach Leslie's 175. Yusuf's going to be the biggest guy. I think as soon as he's off the uh, the injury reserve, they'll send him down there. And he's six foot two, two twelve. Yeah, he's two twelve. But you don't have those guys that are two two twenty five, two thirty that can push people around. That's true. And and I, we haven't really. And again, even for that matter, um, you you don't see Nielsen pushing a lot of people right now. His game has gotten better from last year. But he's still not as physical as he can be and or should be uh, in in this league. He he still gets pushed off the puck and for a two hundred thirty pounder to get pushed off the puck a lot uh, and to be in a bad position uh, is disheartening. But I mean, Nielsen's also a guy who I think has an outside chance. This isn't a guy we're looking at as being you know the next Rasmus Anderson or the next you know Mark Giordano. So that's kind of what you expect from a guy who was brought in the organization the way he was. From watching him, I think he's at least two years away from the NHL bottom pairing. I I don't think he's a guy that you should look at and and bank on the fact that this guy is going to be in the NHL next year or two years. I, I don't see it. Every I, I time really someone care. brings up Nielsen to me, I look at him as, and maybe I'm wrong because I haven't seen him play as much as you, but I always look at him as AHL depth. He is. I mean, he's playing right now. He, he's on top pair with with Davidson. I think if he's on your NHL roster on opening day, it's because you're really weak on defense. Yeah, absolutely. And he's not going to go anywhere but the NHL, or but the AHL. Yeah, I mean, he might get a you know a call up here or there if a team needs a defenseman quickly. But this is not a guy who who's a, you know Rasmus Anderson or Shillington or anyone like that who you know probably develops into a full time NHLer. He he's my third call up and the only reason he's my third call up is cuz he's the only guy that is on an a, an NHL contract on the defense right now. Yeah, no that makes sense. And I think even if I mean we we see the Flames too, they like to go out and get guys like um you know sort of depth defensemen at the deadline. And I think we're going to see that again. I think they know they don't have a lot of guys there and they're going to want somebody for a playoff run. So I think we'll probably see them go out and, and grab a guy a little bit better than a Buddy Robinson for a sixth or seventh pick, just to have to avoid calling those guys up. Yeah, I, I could. You know, they they did that last year with Fantenberg, and I could see them doing the same thing. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly the type of player I was thinking of as a Fantenberg type. So we've got uh, we're in late late December here. When is the AHL All Star Game? January twenty sixth and twenty seventh. It's in Ontario this year. And do they do fan voting like they do in the NHL? No, they don't. They do not. And is it where one player from every team has to be there, or can there be no players from a team? I'm not so sure on the rules. Uh, I know that we've had a player. I believe it's a player from every team. If you look at this year's roster, who do you think would be your uh, all-star nod? It's going to be Phillips or Godden or both. Or both, yeah. I mean, Phillips is right wing, Godden is center, so you could send them both to play together even. Yeah, I, I could see them both going to uh... – both going to be all star. I think you might be able to even see Zagadulin go if he keeps his his win streak there. Um, I could almost see him. I mean, he's fourth in the league in wins right now. Uh, they they may they may pull him as well just based on on wins alone. Yeah, it makes sense. And I mean, I don't know about the AHL, but I think in the NHL they want three goalies, or they used to want three goalies per team. So if he's you know that high ranked in the league, I could see him going. Again, his 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 goals against and his save percentage are not the best in the world. But if you're going to go just on wins alone, he has a shot. And I think also remembering that this is his first year in North America. I mean, they're not the best stats, but for a guy who's new to North America, I think he's doing better than we all predicted he would. He plays well. He he's an, he's an active player. I said uh, and a couple of times before. He reminds me of Riddich when Riddich was here his first year. Um, very active, likes to play the puck, plays on top of his of, of his crease, um, does some stuff that still kind of, you know, th- that questionable come out three quarters in between the circles to try to play a puck. 
Um, but he hasn't gotten beat on it yet, which is good. Um, he'll make the initial stop and it's usually the second and third attempts that, that go in the back of the net. So overall, I think he's still adjusting a little bit and, um, and I think he's going to be, he's going to be good. Matt and I have talked about, you know, what would it take to keep Cam Talbot in Calgary next year? And I don't think that they're going to want to pay what that costs for a team that's close to the, you know, the sal- the salary cap. Um, do you think that based on what you've seen, Zagadulin or Gillies would be ready for that jump next year to be a backup to Riddick? Oh, boy. Or is it time to go and find another NHL veteran? I think if you... It all depends on what happens and what their belief is with Gillies. I, I don't think they're going to sign Gillies. And if they do not sign Gillies, they're going to have to find a backup for a year. Because I think Zagadulin will take another year here. I also think they're going to try and move Gillies as part of a package of the deadline. I, I could see that. If, if, if he keeps playing, he's got value to, to be part of that package. They'll bring Parsons up to be the second and um and and that could be well but i still think that you will have parsons and zagadulin here next year as well thank you thank you one year deal and uh i think the flames are going to have to go out and find an, uh, an nhl backup for a year yeah i don't know how much value just because everyone has a goalie like Gillies, he would have by himself in a deal. I don't think you can say move John Gillies for a third or a fourth pick or something like that, but I think wrapping him up with somebody else, everyone likes to have another young goalie. And if you put him in a Froelich deal or a Hammock deal or something like that, I think there's some some value there. Or a Shillington deal. Yeah, I don't know that you'd put a young defenseman and a young goalie together for what you'd get for Shillington, maybe. But I could see it being like Froelich and, you know, Gillies for something. Yeah. I also don't know if they want to – I don't think you're going to get a lot of value moving Shillington at this point by himself either. No, Gillies, Shillington, all will have to be a part of a, a package deal if they're going to bring somebody else back. Uh, I don't know if you could actually move a fro leak right now. I don't, I don't think that salary – Not is, yet, but at the deadline you'll get something for At the him. deadline you'll get something for that. I can see that. I don't think any of these happen until the deadline. And I, and I agree – if if there's a if there's a team out there that is that needs a an AHL goalie that's that's hurting in net, I can see Gillies being part of that deal. I can even see a team who lost their backup, thinks they might have a playoff shot, and goes, "Well, this guy's veteran enough; we can stick him in there for a month and a half." He has NHL experience. Exactly. You know, you're not going to put him as your top guy, but if your backup got hurt, you might say, you know what, he's good enough for a month and a half. Hopefully, we won't have to use him in the playoffs. I I agree with that. I agree with that a lot. Anybody else we should be looking at right now, Jeff? Or any other stories we should know about for this team? They've beaten San Jose, um, which has been a nemesis, and and they've beaten them four times now. So we took the train over. There's a, a commuter train uh, that runs from Stockton to San Jose, and um, they play a one fifteen game on Saturdays because they do the double header with the Sharks. So we jumped on the train and and took it over to San Jose, and there were about nine hundred pl- uh, people in the in the stands, even though AHL said there were thirty two hundred. Uh, and we watched the three uh, two game there in um, in San Jose. And jumped on the train and took it back. So uh, it's kind of it's always kind of fun to go to somebody else's rink and. And nice fans. How long does it take to get there? On the train, it's about an hour and forty-five minutes. Um, it it puts you about a block away from the arena, and so it's a it's a nice little two or three minute walk to the arena, and it, it was good. We had a a good good host of fans there, probably about forty or fifty uh, uh, Heat fans that were there, and it was fun. It was it was a good time, and and I know they're doing a they have two more Saturday games uh, in San Jose. And uh, I think we're going to do we're going to do one or both of them. Well, Jeff, I think that's probably about all we have to chat about this month. Then Uh, we'll bring you back in January and see how the team is faring. And hopefully they can stay near the top of the Pacific Division, if not, maybe overtake that top team. Sounds great. And I want to say thanks again, Dan, for the time and go Flames and go Heat. Fireside Chat is hosted by Dan Stevenson, co-hosted by Matt DeBorg. This episode produced and edited by Peter Marino. Fireside Chat is licensed under a Creative Commons license. 
For full license details, visit firesidechat.ca.